Morning all. Hope you're well. Happy Friday. For us here in the UK, it's a little bit of a happier Friday because we have a long weekend. We have a bank holiday this weekend on Monday. So we're off from today till the end of Monday. I've got you mounted in a slightly different position today, just on the right hand side of my screen. So I don't know if that changes the perspective in any way. Currently smoking my uh, Bentley by former, of course. And in the Bentley this morning, I have some McClellan's 40th anniversary. It's been a good while since I've, since I've smoked this. I had, I had actually misplaced my jar and um, it just turned up. I've got no idea. It seemed to be on the shelf like normal. It must have been one of those um, where it's right in front of you but you don't see it. Used to be a bit of a tradition for me to smoke 40th anniversary on a Friday in this Bentley. Usually on a Friday afternoon. It is tasting a little bit spicier. It's been a while since I've smoked it. And uh, this particular tin, I felt was a little bit uh, underpowered, if you like. It was a little bit decaffeinated compared to the other 40th anniversaries that I'd had. But it's actually tasting quite a bit richer now, a bit spicier. A little bit of time in the jar. Always a good thing for a Virginia tobacco. 2005 Christmas cheer. I haven't jarred up yet, it's still on my desk, but I've been dipping into it every so often trying it out. And even in the couple of weeks that it's been open, I've seen a slight improvement, so I do need to jar it up. But I need to get some more uh, small jars. I've got a ridiculous amount of jars on my shelves. Um, it's just uh, so many open tobaccos, it's just not real. Quite a few people teetering on a uh, thousand subs. Um, Uncle Phil Seller, he was talking about it this morning in his video uh, about John Williams, the bearded Welshman, who's teetering on, on just I think he was on 997 last night when I saw him. It's quite frustrating when you're at that stage. I'm at a similar stage on mine, I'm teetering under 5,000 subscribers, and it's just taken forever um, but um, you know but I think maybe it's harder when it's um, when you're getting your when you reach your first thousand um, and it, it is frustrating because the numbers once you get into those kind of numbers the numbers go up and down you notice it more so you could be on 999 way I'm about to do it and then suddenly it jumps back to 996 or something like that And mine's been um, somewhere between 950 and 1,000 for a good few months now. And I don't really notice the numbers that much, really. I mean, I have noticed it now last night because I was looking into that, but generally speaking, that and the thumbs ups and downs, I don't really. I've got my regular thumbs downers, like a few people on the YTPC. And you know what, if it keeps them happy, I'm happy with that too. So of course, um, we've got the auction tomorrow night, all being well. I want to say a thank you to all the people who have done shout outs. Um, I can't remember everybody, but um, I'll try to remember as many as I can. So there was Uncle Phil this morning, um, Andrew Serigliano, Mel Harris, Garbage Man Piper, Mike Briar Blues, Canerod Piper, Mike, 
he uh, did one during his live the other day. And I think George or Jorge, if I'm not sure how he pronounces it, he mentioned it as well. And I think John Williams did as well. Where did Welshman? And I'm not sure anybody else, but if you did, thank you very, very much. It's much appreciated. I really hope that we get a good turnout tomorrow um, and that we can raise some funds for the family. Big shout out to all the people who donated pipes. And I also owe a big thank you to uh, to Josh at Dragon Briars. Um, he made a pipe and he, he's very, very frustrated and I totally understand him. He made a pipe, uh, um, a 673, but with a Dragon's Briars signature rustication. Uh, you know, like the sunburst kind of uh, look. And he sent that over here, but it never reached its destination. And that's very, very annoying. Um, never mind, you know, if you pay for a pipe, it doesn't arrive. But if you make a pipe, you put your effort into it and you donate it and you see nothing for it. That's very hard. So Josh, your efforts are appreciated and considered by me as if it reached here and that it uh, did its job and raised some good funds for the family. So thank you very, very much for that. He actually posted a few pictures of the pipe on Instagram uh, either yesterday or the day before, telling people, if you see this pipe, you have his permission to shoot them on sight. Whoever, whoever's holding that pipe. Certainly somebody in customs is either mean a little bit too enthusiastic, confiscated it and destroyed it. Or they've just uh, taken it and enjoying a pipe. Here in the UK, if you get stopped, if a customs item, get, if an item gets stopped by customs, they'll usually send it on to you. Well, they may not send it to you, but they'll send you a ticket with a bill for the customs and excise duty. But at least you have the option of, of getting your item. It's very rare that they get confiscated. The only time it gets confiscated, I think, is if you, um, I think that if you import an illegal amount, I'm not talking about an illegal substance, tobacco is not illegal, um, but if you import, um, I'm not sure what the maximums are these days, but if you exceed it by a gross amount, and you, it's obvious that it's just a crazy, ridiculous amount, and I think then they could seize it. Or if you have a lighter with fuel in it, that certainly will get seized and destroyed. Um, and sometimes even without fuel in them, they get destroyed. Crazy thing is, is that if you bought a lighter in the States and it's arrived at the UK customs, what's the point of them destroying it then? It's already safe. I mean, the reason why you're not allowed to do send uh, lighters and lighter fuel is because they're explosive and they're worried about it in flight under pressure. If it's already arrived in your destination country, what's the risk? But I, I guess it's punitive so that it uh, prevents you doing it in the future, maybe. I don't know. So I'm not 100% clear when it gets confiscated and when not. When you get charged and when they get confiscated. I'm not clear on that myself. I have to say, overall, though, it's it's worked out pretty well. You know, um, over the five years that I've been almost on the YTPC, I've had maybe one or two packages go go astray, and I've sent hundreds. If I include all the pipes that I've sent, I've literally sent hundreds around the world. has been too bad. I 
enjoyed the new Ramon Iones 2019 limited edition cigar last night. I uploaded the video. It wasn't as fantastic as some people have made out, but it may have just been my cigar, but it was good, but not amazing to me. But it was enjoyable in part. days before that I had a, a Lever Serie V Melania that's a great cigar and I don't say that very often about non-Cuban cigars but that really is a very very good cigar another good non-Cuban is uh, the Davidoff late hour um, again it's very rare that I say that about a Davidoff cigar I'm not a Davidoff cigar fan as a rule but that cigar is corking a great cigar. It's just a shame that Cuban cigars are so un unpredictable. It really is. Because the flavor potential is, is pretty awesome. Um, but they just seem to get the, the rolling wrong a lot of the time. Not as bad as it used to be, but it's bad enough still. And, um, you know, the, the thing about Cuban cigars is that you try to get aged Cuban cigars, which means that even if the rolling has improved of late, if you get an aged one, you're running the risk of, of getting one of those which are either very tight or even possibly plugged. Plugged cigars is actually really, really rare. In a plugged cigar, what you have is a piece of tobacco, essentially, which is folded horizontally basically blocking the air passage and if you have one of those tools uh, a perfect draw tool um, you pierce that leaf and you should be good to go um, the thing is I've actually never really I mean I've got a perfect draw and I use it when I have to um, and some people swear by them they say that they're amazing but to me unless I'm not using them properly I don't think it's rocket science um, I never find that they actually save the cigar. They make the cigar smokable. Um, you can get air through it, but the smoking experience is never right. It either goes hot or it still stays tight, um, but smokable. Um, but it's never as intended. Sometimes it's just not worth the effort and it's simpler to just put it down. The problem is that with the Cuban cigars, that they're so expensive that uh, you just don't want to do that. So what I always advise people is when you get a Cuban cigar in a shop, ask them to cap it in the shop, to take the cap off, try it, unlit, and if it's tight, just tell them it's too tight and they should change it for you. Most decent shops will do that for you. If you're buying them uh, online, then that's a different matter, obviously. Anyhow, I'm going to wish you all a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow night, midnight UK time, with your pocketbooks bulging. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you on the next one.